Hey, you guys, we're in um, north central Wyoming. Deaver? Near, near the town of Deaver. Not, yeah, not Beaver, but Deaver. This is Beaver Reservoir near Deaver. And uh, it's all froze over right now. There's guys out there that are ice fishing. Looks like it's fun. Crazy, crazy, they're walking out on the ice. Well, to me, it's crazy. <laughs> Coming from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, it seems crazy too, because I'd rather catch my fish in the summer and put them on ice in a cooler. Yeah. <laughs> ice fishing in Hawaii is you go to the market and they have the fresh fish laying on ice. There that's, you go. That's that's good. That's ice fishing. This looks cold. Yeah. Hey, we've been on the road for about three days. Left our home in central Montana. Drove down into Billings. Um, we met some really nice viewers of ours by the name of Jamie and Andy. And yeah. uh, we want to thank them for kicking in for gas on this trip. Thank you very much. <laughs> and lunch. And they bought us lunch and pie. Yeah. Any, if there's any other viewers out there like that, you know, be sure and ring us up. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm kidding. I'm only kidding. Yeah, Jamie and Andy, thank you guys. Hey, anyways, we've got some plans for north central Wyoming. As you can tell, it's kind of cold. It's January 27th, 2024. But uh, there's some places we want to go here and some places we want to show you. And that's what we'll be doing. Fair enough? Yeah. Let's get on with it. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't actually get busted for flying my drone. I was flying my drone and the sheriff deputy stopped by and asked me what kind of drone it was because he's a drone pilot too. <laughs> we talked drones. They were so nice. And uh, we gave him stickers and they all, he had already heard about Gone Again <laughs> somehow. But anyways, they were really nice. I'm enjoying the evening here. As soon as Linda and I got here, it was an hour before sunset. And I got to tell you, it's pleasant when the wind's not blowing. Here it is now. It's just getting down to about freezing. It's very pleasant outside. It was 40 degrees when we got here. Uh, oh, we were in Billings earlier. And the wind was blowing. It was 53 degrees. And it was miserable just going from the car to the trailer to make lunch, you know. But we get here and the wind's not blowing. The sun's above the horizon. And it's 40 degrees, and man, I was flying the drone, and I got the ladder out, and I was up on the ladder cleaning the solar panels on the roof, and just enjoying it, because <laughs> it's been a while since we've been able to be outside, and, you know, this, is, this, was, this trip was a little bit of an escape for us, because it's been sub-zero up in central Montana for weeks, and it this week I saw that the temperatures were coming up and Linda and I packed the trailer and headed out. But now we're out here in the middle of nowhere and we're liking it. Yeah, 30 degrees outside, 66 inside. That's pleasant enough. Just a brief note here, you know we've talked about using a fan to blow the hot air down off the ceiling to the floor, or a fan that, you know, kind of bounces the heat from the cabinet, from the countertop here. We had a fan mounted there and it would bounce the heat off the ceiling and down to the floor. And I gotta show you something. Somebody mentioned to me a while back about putting a fan down on the floor, pointing up at the ceiling. And I told him, I says, well, it'll just be blowing cold air. But you know what? <laughs> he was right. It blows the cold air up to the ceiling, but moves the warm air off the ceiling down the sides of the walls 
and warms up the whole interior of the trailer. It's been very nice. We've had it going all night like this. Very pleasant. Of course, we're in a trailer with one inch thick walls. So it's got one inch of styrofoam, inch and a half in the ceiling, two inches in the floor. But like night before last, it got down to 17 degrees. Nothing's gonna be perfect. It's gonna have cold spots. But um, that little system with the fan blowing up, I never would have thought it would have been uh, workable, but it seems to be pretty good. You can try it. Kind of pretty out, isn't it, Linda? Yeah, very. Feel like going for a little walk? Yeah, I walked that away so we can walk. The other way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's just go explore a little bit. It's such a pretty area. It's not too cold, huh, Linda? Uh, it's not bad. But I do have several layers on. Yeah, you look like a Pillsbury, a black Pillsbury doughboy there. Hey, watch it. No, I'm talking about your coat. Uh, it's pretty. But though. it's not bad. You want to walk out on the ice? On that ice? <laughs> That's the ice I'm talking about. <laughs> well, you could buy some ice cubes, and I'll walk on that. <laughs> Well, we just talked to a fisherman that said uh, the ice is about a foot thick. So you can almost drive a car or you can drive a car on it. He says a pickup truck was driving on it yesterday. So I think Linda will be all right. <laughs> One thing I heard was that two people shouldn't stand too close together. What are these cracks? That's from the last person that walked out here. <laughs> I remember ice skating as a kid. This would be perfect. It would be so much fun. Look at the uh, fisherman friend we just met. His name is Carson and his dog. He's out there checking his, uh, what do you call those thing? His tip ups. Tip ups, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what they're called. We're not ice fishermen. Yeah, I'm not a fisherman anyway. <laughs> I'm a fish eater. But um, he's thinking it's probably a rainbow trout if he has one on the line. Cause the other fish they catch out of here is um, walleye and he said they get those at night which I didn't know either he said well I've only had walleye one time Linda and I and it was like 25 years ago so long ago but uh, walleye doesn't have a fishy taste it's just a meat taste so the fishermen love the walleye he's been catching his limit every night here three walleye a night so that's pretty good you know we enjoyed this campsite because we left our home in central Montana a few days ago and it was kind of a, a little bit of a rough trip coming down weather-wise. We just made it into the uh, trailer and what's the temperature outside Rick? It's 30 below. <laughs> 30 below. It's 30 below out there, maybe pushing 35. It's supposed to hit minus 39 this, tonight yet. Oh my it, goodness. Yeah, we were going to spend the night out here, but um, uh, we changed our minds. <laughs> 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 well, there's, uh, you know, I turned on the propane and it immediately uh, started on the front of the trailer and I can immediately smell propane. So the propane is already acting funny and, you know, propane quits flowing at around minus 40. Yeah. So. And then there's the fact that uh, if we were in here with the propane heat going, we need to have enough ventilation. Yeah, so... Uh, which lets in the uh, frigid air. Yeah, so it wasn't going to get much above zero in no. here tonight. <laughs> Anyways, this was going to be an experience. Uh, <laughs> this was going to be an experience. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, this is going to be, was going to be an experiment, but we've uh, changed our minds. Yeah.
You know, a couple years ago, I did a video called Cargo Trailer at Minus 15 Degrees. That video's had like, I think it's pushing three quarters of a million views. For some reason, people thought that it was interesting. It was a pretty boring video, really, but it did really well. I thought it was boring because it was just me talking, like now. I was going to put down some heavy carpeting, maybe some foam insulation on the floor, just to make the floor warmer for tonight. And we were going to bring out some really good bedding and everything. I'm sure that once we went to bed, everything was going to be fine. Maybe tolerable might be the right word. <laughs> I had these window covers. Well, it was right here that my mic quit working because it was so cold. And then I was showing you here that I had a heat lamp on the batteries and there's a thermometer right in front of the heat lamp and it's at minus 25 degrees. Yeah, a little too cold. The first campsite we stayed at was this one that I'm showing you the picture of now. That's the view out of our window of the trailer. It was uh, early morning, the sun had just come up and it was only 17 degrees out and the wind was blowing. <laughs> just the wind coming through that window was freezing me while I took that picture and the video. And uh, then we made our way down to Billings, spent two nights in Billings and then came on down here to where we told you we were at but it's been nice because we can actually get outside here and walk around. It's, yeah, because the wind's not blowing. It's, yeah. it's still cold, but it, the wind's not blowing. And then there's the thing about winter camping in Montana. Yeah, Linda, why, why don't right. we? Well, because uh, winter camping can be very dangerous because <laughs> <laughs> uh, of the extreme cold we get in Montana and um, there's also snow on the ground. And then you'll get a day where it's beautiful, nice, no wind and that's when you book it into your trailer and try to find a camp spot because then it's beautiful if the wind's not blowing. But the problem is uh, during the winter in Montana, the wind's blowing 90% of the time and you can't sit out and enjoy a fire or anything. It's just miserable. It's just too cold. Yeah. Even the fire shivers. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. But down here, we saw a week's worth of warmer weather and we're going right back. It's supposed to snow this coming weekend. Today is Sunday and uh, starting uh, this week, coming weekend, we're supposed to get hit with snow again. We want to be home before that hits. So yeah, we'll tour a little bit more here in Wyoming. Did you know that there's snow right there? Yeah, there's plenty of snow around here, but, Ooh. It's, but it's not falling down. <laughs> I got to walk on the ice. Yeah, she did. And I didn't kill myself. <laughs> Oh, another thing is our friend over here, Carson, he's from Wyoming here. He says he's been ice bathing. He created a three foot wide hole out here in the ice. He says that when he goes down, the water's only waist deep. He's been ice bathing. He says, he, he says that is the quickest weight loss possible. Says he's lost 20 pounds this winter ice bathing. <laughs> yeah, he can have it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I'd rather die it. No. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, he says it just invigorates you. He says the rest of the day yeah, you're he, just invigorated. He just, yeah, he just feels wonderful the rest of the day. Yeah, not me. I wouldn't do that. It'd probably stop my heart. <laughs> yeah. The ice is blue when you get out there. It's kind of bluish white. Yeah. Well, ice is blue. When you see the glaciers up in Alaska, they're, yeah, they're all blue. blue. Yeah. And in the crevices, they go to a deep navy blue down there. But inside. it's cool here because it looks like it's still water, you know? Yeah. It's like it's not frozen. So you look out there and you see people walking. It's like yep. they're walking on water. Well, anyways, you guys, thanks for coming along on this video. This is a good place to end it. We're going to have a nice evening here in, the, in camp and see, see you around. <laughs>